Boy, the shirt's great this year. And it's nice to see you eye to eye for a change. For the first time since he retired as a player, we've been able to get Ken Singleton to dig in. Come on up to the ballpark. The game's about to start. It's Jimmy Jones for the Padres against John Dobson for the Expos on TSN. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Welcome back to San Diego and Jack Murphy Stadium. And with me right now is the manager of the San Diego Padres. That's Larry Bow. And Larry, it seems as though the ball club is struggling right now, especially scoring runs. But I feel that's kind of a drought throughout the league, but the Padres seem to be hit the hardest. Yeah, we have definite uh, power shortage here, Ken, in uh, San Diego. We just, we get runners on. We just can't get a big hit with two outs to score them. And, uh, and you know how that is as the next player, that uh, the harder you try, the worse it gets. I think they're all trying too hard. Each guy goes up there saying, if I don't do it, the guy behind me can't do it, so I'm going to try to get, knock this ball out of the ballpark. And when that happens, you pull off and end up hitting the ball in the air. So we got to relax and just go out and see what happens. Is there anything that you can do as a manager to try and get these guys out of this slump or a different strategy? You know you're not going to get the long ball? Well, what you try to do is try to put people in motion, try to create some holes out there, because right now it looks like there's about 18 people out there in the field, and every ball we hit being caught so we'll do some hitting and running let some guys steal some bases uh, try to squeeze the other night that backfires <laughs> whatever we're doing right now is backfiring hopefully we can go out tonight and score some runs thank you very much larry good luck to you okay Grant. you're watching labats expos baseball on tsn these have been on the road for the better part of the last uh, two weeks, they've actually played their last nine games on the road, seven games on the road, rather, and are home tonight to face the Montreal Expos as they return to the West Coast. And there's the crew, Dave Pallone, whose name has been in the news more than he or the umpiring association would like it to have been, is behind home plate. John Kibler, Jim Quick, and Tom Hallion, also part of this crew. The weather has been absolutely gorgeous on the West Coast. And I'm not saying that just to rub it in. It's a fact. 21 degrees Celsius at game time as it starts to cool into the evening here. Wind blowing from right to left. And as you can see by the five kilometers per hour, it is not going to be much of a factor in this game. The Padres, as you heard, have struggled. John Cruck part of the team that has scored just seven runs on the road in its last nine games. They've had a tough time. Yeah, we've been getting guys on base. The problem is just getting them in. Uh, I, I don't know what the problem is. Uh, I've hit into a couple double plays. I've struck out with men on base. Um, you know, every, no one's hit well with men on base this year for us. And, you know, you know that's the name of the game. Uh, if you don't get hits with men on base, you might as well not even get the hits. Good look at John Crook at first base. You heard him explain about the Padres hitting woes, but they have been getting some good pitching. Starting pitching has been excellent, a lot better than it was last time this year, so the Padres' trouble seem to come when they come up the bat. The starter tonight for the San Diego Padres as they start this homestand against the Expos and the Mets to follow will be 24-year-old Dallas, Texas native Jimmy Jones. And the lineup that he'll face isn't its usual self. You'll notice that Tim Wallach is not in the Montreal lineup. He's out with a bad back, so Greg Nettles gets the start at third. Mitch Webster sits out. Herm Winninghand with his 355 average gets into center field. The Expos as a, as a team are hitting 251. That's sixth in the league. Brooks is the RBI leader with 24. Galarraga leads in most other offensive categories. Tim Raines has 15 stolen bases to lead the team in that department. Give you an illustration of how Jimmy Jones is going last start. He pitched against Pittsburgh's Doug Drabeck, who went into the ninth inning with a no-hitter against the Padres. And they ended up losing that game 6-2. to two. So Jimmy Jones may be pitching in a little bit of bad luck, not getting much support. But he's the type of pitcher who's going to have to keep his pitches down to be successful. He's not overpowering. Manager Larry Bowen said if he gets his pitches belt high or around where the hitters can turn on him, he can be in trouble. He only strikes out an average of three batters every nine innings. Here's the defense behind him tonight. That's John Crook again at first base. Roberto Alomar, rookie at second base. Gary Templeton, a veteran at shortstop. Randy Reddy at third. Carmelo Martinez in left field. Shane Max, speedster in center field. Sean Abner, another youngster in right. And last year's rookie of the year, Benito Santiago behind the plate. And Jimmy Jones on the mound. 
So with Jones not striking out many batters and throwing an awful lot of low pitches, you can expect the infielders to be busy men tonight if Jones is on his game. The first batter to face Jones will be Tim Raines, the leadoff man for the Montreal Expos. His average has been as high as 298, but it's fallen as a result of the three-game series in Atlanta. Raines went one for 12. He'd really been on a hot streak, batting over 400 in a streak just before Atlanta. You can almost feel it coming, though, that he's going to break out and get over that 300 mark, and once he does, he's going to remain there for the rest of the season. Foul ball back, a nice catch by a fan. Mm. But the count evens up to a ball and strike on Tim Raines. One and one. Jimmy Jones started three times against the Expos last year and for his career. And he's 0-2, a lifetime against Montreal. Born and still lives in Dallas, Texas. Here's the one-two pitch to Tim Raines. Great diving stab by Alomar at second base, and he throws out Tim Raines. What a play. Well, this is about as good as you're going to see from a second baseman, especially moving to his right. Watch him leave his feet, full extension. And this is the reason why this young man was called up from the minor leagues from Las Vegas recently. Great play. He retires a speedy Tim Raines. Robbed of a base hit. One more look at it. Not only does he re recover, but he has to make a good, strong throw to first because Raines can get down the line. That's a sensational play that... Took away a base hit from Tim Raines. Check swing on the ground by Johnny Paredes. And he's out very quickly as the ball went down to John Cruck. Roberto Alomar. Son of San Diego third base coach Sandy Alomar. So you know his dad's kind of got a smile on his face right now. Sitting in the dugout. His younger brother. is in the minor leagues as a catcher. Sandy Jr. And he's apparently a very good catcher. Should say his older brother in the minor leagues as a catch. Here's Hubie Brooks with two away. <laughs> Brooks swings and misses, 0-2. When a pitcher or a young pitcher especially gets defensive support like that can really give him a pick-me-up because uh, the leadoff hitter is not on base. It's a spectacular play. You know, you're facing a, a situation with Tim Raines, one of the best base dealers in history on first and nobody out. So you're staring in a tough situation. Instead, he's got one man out and now two. Count is one and two on QB who went five for 15 in Atlanta and drove in five runs. This is a team he hit 320 against last year. Likes to play against the Padres. Two and two, two away. I think Yubi's one of the Expo players that enjoys coming out to the West Coast in general. Gets the chance to play in front of his family and friends. And nobody wants to perform poorly in that situation. Foul ball into the seats down the right field line. Two balls and two strikes, two outs. Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego seats 59,022 for baseball. There won't be that many people here tonight, but a good Friday night crowd to welcome back the Padres from their road trip, as dismal as it was, with just one win. Here's a ground ball. Randy Reddy, the third baseman, throws out Hubie Brooks. So some decent pitching in the top of the first. Some sensational defense from Randy Reddy and particularly Roberto Alomar and the Expos are finished and the Padres are coming up in the bottom of inning number one. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. The starter tonight for the Montreal Expos is 24-year-old John Dobson, his second start this year, but he was a starter with the Expos for three times in 1985, once in Los Angeles. 
Oh, that was in '85. I was, you know, so I was 21 years old, and I was, I think, to myself, I was kind of intimidated. And you know, now I think I'm more seasoned. I'm not nervous. I'm not, you know, intimidated by the, you know, big names and stuff. So, you know, I'm more calm. You know, and I don't worry about things. I just go out there and, you know, do what I did that got me here. His last start was a no decision. He pitched five innings against the Phillies. A two-hit ball, two runs were scored. Here's the lineup he'll face tonight. If you think the Expos have had trouble scoring runs, check out the Padres. Just 76 runs scored this season. That's just over two a game. Part of the problem is the absence of Tony Gwynn. He's injured a right thumb and is out for another two weeks. Third baseman Chris Brown is also out with an injury. And Keith Moreland's on the bench tonight, so there's considerable pop missing from an already thin order that's batting just 227. Only Philadelphia and Atlanta have a worse team batting average. Well, I'm sure John Dobson won't miss Tony Gwynn tonight, one of the best hitters in uh, all of baseball. Gwynn out with that bad thumb, sprained it while running the bases. Tried to, lost his balance, tried to right himself, and he's uh, out for two weeks, had a cast on it for a while. But Dobson is doing well down at AAA at Indianapolis. Got the recall the first time when Neil Heaton was hurt, and now comes back with Pasquale Perez is on the injured list. Defense tonight, Andres Galarraga, Johnny Paredes, Tom Foley, and Greg Nettles around the infield. Reigns, Whittingham, and Brooks in the outfield. Jeff Reed behind the plate, and John Dobson on the mound. There's Greg Nettles in a familiar position at third base, particularly in this stadium, one of the other teams that he played for, the San Diego Padres. It's been like old home week on this road trip for Greg. First visited in Atlanta, where he had played last year, and now in San Diego, where he played prior to his stop in Atlanta. Roberto Alomar, after that sensational diving stab on the Tim Raines ground ball at second, is the leadoff man. Just 20 years old, just three years of professional baseball. It's unusual. Only exceptional talents move up that quickly. Last year, Wichita hit 319, stole 43 bases, so he does have the speed. And during his career, a short one that it has been, he said 293, 346, and 319. So Roberto Alomar has shown the Padres that he deserves a, a shot at the big leagues. In fact, the Padres have had problems at second base since the departure of Alan Wiggins. Ball four inside. That's not the way John Dobson wanted to get things going as he walks the first man he faces. And now we'll face Gary Templeton. Sure, Buck told him to get the ball over the plate. These guys aren't swinging the bats pretty well. Just get the ball over, make them earn their way on base. You don't want to help them out, especially a speedster like Alomar. And they have a veteran like Templeton who can put the bat on the ball at the plate. It's with more than just a little interest and concern that Buck Rogers watches John Dobson pitch tonight because he's banished Floyd Yeomans to the bullpen. Pasquale Perez is hurt. They need Dobson. They need this guy to be a regular fourth starter. Alomar leading off. Templeton swings and misses. Strike two, 0 oh 2. To the veteran Gary Templeton, 32 years old, his seventh season in San Diego, but his 13th season in the big leagues. Alomar was out here earlier today among, um, along with some of the other young players for the Padres, and they were working with former star of the Kansas City Royals, Amos Otis, who is now one of the coaches here. Foul ball out of play. Otis was showing them how to get a lead down at first base. And if you look closely at Alomar when he takes his lead, you'll see that his front foot is turned and facing towards second. In other words, he doesn't have to cross over. That first foot just steps out, and then he crosses over, and he's gone. That's something Otis used to do when he was playing with Kansas City, and he was a very successful base stealer. The Padres really haven't been a threat to steal when they've got runners on. Only stolen 17 bases this year. Tim Raines has just two fewer than that by himself. They've got to get something going, though. Got to put some runners in motion. They're not scoring runs with the big hits. Alomar takes his lead, and Templeton takes a hard cut and misses. Strike three. One away. Strikeout number one for John Dobson. A number of the pitches were down in the strike zone to Gary Templeton. Then Dobson pops a fastball by him upstairs. See the target from Jeff Reed. Swings right through it.
So up comes the number three man in the order who's been missing some time lately with a sore right shoulder, John Cruck, and his 292 batting average. Cruck, I feel, is one of the more underrated players in our league. He has missed some time, but he's hit 292 with three home runs and nine RBIs. Drove in 91 runs last year for the Padres, and May was his month. 405 in May of 87. Tops in the major leagues. It's a type of hitter can spray the ball around the field, but for left-hand hitter, hits the ball predominantly to the left side of second base, and the Expos defense has shifted accordingly. Yubi Brooks way off of the line in right field, even though he's a left-handed hitter. See how far Yubi's almost in right center field. That's that's where you would play a right-handed hitter. If he can pull the ball to the corner, that runs course from first. <laughs> Alomar getting a bigger lead at first base. 2-0 to John Cruck. John's very frank assessment of the team in its recent road trip was, we stink. <laughs> he got a haircut. Came off the road and he wasn't happy with it today when he came to the ballpark. He's gonna he's gonna get it trimmed again tomorrow. Fastball inside. Dobson walks his second hitter. And Jeff Reed will come out to talk to John Dobson as Alomar goes down to second base. Crock is on first, one away, and here's the cleanup hitter. The National League Rookie of the Year last year, Benito Santiago. hidden down here in San Diego. An awful lot of people didn't get a chance to see him play or hear very much about him until he went on a 34-game hitting streak at the end of the season. But even that was overshadowed considerably by the Paul Molitor streak last year. Longest streak ever by a catcher, by a rookie. Breaking ball on the corner. So far, it's been a no-contact inning for Dobson. Two walks and a strikeout. Right now, he'd like to get a ground ball to short or second, get himself out of this jam. First and second, one away. Oh, and one pitch is up and in, ball one. That's Roberto Alomar out on second base. And John Cruck at first, both on with base on balls. No score, we're in the bottom of the first inning from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. One and one pitch. Hit to right center. Hubie Brooks playing it nicely is over there to make the catch and he makes a great throw into third base over everybody's head to Greg Nettles and Alomar is stuck at second wisely. <laughs> that was a good throw by Hubie although he did overthrow the cutoff man. There was no way Alomar was going to make it. Watch him get a few steps get into the throw and let it go. Alomar had bluffed going to third. He had tagged up. Perfect throw by UB Brooks right on the money. Good thing Alomar stayed put. You don't want to get thrown out at third base to end an inning or to start an inning. That was like a Glenn Wilson throw out of right field. I think that's been one of the smoother transitions, Some, something we were all worried about in spring training. UB Brooks, how he would play right field. No sweat. That, no sweat whatsoever. Looks like he's been out there forever. Here's Randy Reddy, normally a utility player, but playing every day right now as he did late last season, filling in at second base. Now he's filling in at third as Larry Bernard, the pitching coach of the Montreal Expos, wants to come out and talk to John Dobson, who's behind again 2-0. John's thrown just 17 pitches, 11 of them for balls in this first inning. You know, uh, probably Larry Bernard saw something uh, from the bench. You got to watch the young pitchers closely. They're getting bad habits, try and overthrow, try and get themselves out of jams by just reaching back as hard as they can and throwing the ball as hard as they can. Then they get out of rhythm, out of sync. Manager Buck Rogers and Larry Bernard seeing that. Go out and make a little trip, try and calm him down. Get this last hitter out. Give your team a chance to get up here and hit and score you some runs. Hmm. 
so far his breaking ball has been the one he's been getting over the plate. His fastball is the one he's having trouble controlling. And getting control of a fastball should be the easiest thing. Or recontrolling a fastball should be the easiest thing for a pitcher. 2-1 pitch. There's the ground ball he wanted. Dotson plays it himself, throws over to Galarraga and has the out. So a shaky first inning, but he doesn't have to pay for it in the form of runs being scored against him. No hits for the Padres, but two left aboard, both on walks. No score after one. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. While on the road, TSN and its crews stay at only the finest beaches. <laughs> Not far from Jack Murphy Stadium, there's miles and miles of oceanfront with next stop Japan. And it's been a beautiful day here today. Only three games in the National League of Baseball yesterday. You see the Padres were in Chicago and lost that series, scoring only one run in 20 innings. St. Louis and San Francisco each had six run innings in that ballgame. St. Louis won it with a four-run inning after their six-run inning. And Pittsburgh a winner over Los Angeles. Greg Nettles leading off the top of the second for the Expos. Sends a drive to center field. Shane Mack trots over to his left, puts it away, and there's one down. Jimmy Jones on to work his second inning. And Nettles sits down as Andres Galarraga comes to the plate. Galarraga, the hottest hitter on the Expos and one of the hottest hitters in the league. Started strong. Had a great spring. Carried it right through the month of April and has continued in May, although the series in Atlanta wasn't great for him. Three for 13. He also had a seven-game hitting streak broken on Tuesday. The Expos were really steamed in general over their loss as you look at Galarraga's position amongst the batting leaders. In Atlanta, they lost the 3-2 game, their last game on Wednesday. And it was a game they should have won. It was a game they had the opportunities to win. They left 10 runners aboard. One point had Tim Raines on third base with nobody out and couldn't score him. And that was something that the team that had such a surprising year last year didn't let happen. They scored those runs. Jones works quickly to Galarraga and gets a rare strikeout for him. Looks like a, a fastball up in the zone and Galarraga's just a little bit late. Maybe not looking for a fastball even though he had two strikes. Jimmy Jones, not overpowering as we mentioned, picks up his first strike out of the night. Two away for catcher Jeff Reed, who's at a fine start. Hitting 290. In fact, the Expos had a meeting before today's game, a team meeting called by manager Buck Rogers. And I think that last game in uh, Atlanta was one of the things he might have been talking about. Got to push across those runners when we get a chance to. Buck doesn't like to have meetings, but no manager really does, but he feels he has to call him when the time is right. Templeton back on the grass in shallow left field to make the catch. Jimmy Jones works smoothly and quickly. Through the second, he has the Expos in order in the first and the second. No score in the game as the Padres come back to the plate in the second. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Some read Shakespeare. Summary Dickens. This looks like Slim Pickens. <laughs> okay, yesterday's scores in the American League. We have Toronto beating Seattle eight to two. Mike Flanagan was the winner of that ball game, won his fourth game of the year. Cleveland over Milwaukee, three to one. Tom Candiotti, the winning pitcher, and Baltimore losing to Texas. Final score there was two to one. Jose Guzman over Jose Bautista. No matter what time of year you come to San Diego, it's always like it's summer holidays because the weather is so nice and you think that everybody's out of school, but they're not. Still a lot of kids at the ballpark tonight. As the weekend starts, San Diego Padres and the Montreal Expos playing for the first time this season. The Expos dominated the Padres last year, as many teams did. They won nine of the 12 games the two squads played against each other. 
John Dobson on to face Martinez, Mack, and Abner. Bottom of the second inning. See if Dobson settles down at all here in the second and regains his control. He's really worked hard to come back after being up in 1985. In 1986, he developed a shoulder problem, had to have surgery, and last year was his comeback year. Now he's fully recovered and in the big leagues hoping to stay and facing Carmelo Martinez right now. Martinez of a 148 average. And Dobson bounces one up to Jeff Reed. Bounced up and hit Martinez in the face off the glove of Jeff Reed. That's when you're really going bad. Hitting 148 and even the baseball is in the dirt. Want to embarrass you. Watch it. <laughs> oh. Wake up. <laughs> Why me? Count evens up at a ball in a strike and a foul ball by Martinez. It's only start number four for Martinez in left field. Keith Moreland, the former Cub, has spent most of the games, in fact, 28 of them out in left field. He sits down tonight. Martinez hits one hard to right field. Not long enough, though, and Hubie Brooks is underneath it. So Dobson got a fastball over the plate. Pittsburgh Pirates keep rolling along. 6-5 Six Six winners over Cincinnati. Eric Davis homered, but Barry Bonds, who has been on a hot streak, hit one for the Pirates along with Sid Bream. So Barry Bonds, his ninth home run of the season. Pittsburgh's record is now 23 and 11. Temporarily within one and a half games of the New York Mets. Second spot, Shane Mack fouls a pitch off and is behind John Dobson 0 and 2. That was Sandy Alomar tossing the ball to the young fan in the stands. Dobson looks in. He'll be facing Mack who was out here taking early batting practice today with batting coach Amos Otis. Ground ball towards Nettles at third. Knocks it down and makes the throw. Veteran Greg Nettles showing you how to play third base. Not always with your glove, sometimes with your chest. You knock it down, you have enough time at third. Let him stay with it. I've seen him do this thousands of times. Yeah. And I think 500 of them when I hit the ball down there. <laughs> you knew he had enough time to get me. Two away then for Sean Abner. Another of the young players on this team. Abner, one of the players that came over in a deal made with the New York Mets. The principal in that deal was Kevin McReynolds, the Mets left fielder. Ground ball finds a hole by Foley. It's short. The first hit of the game goes to Sean Abner. He'll take that with a 160 average. And there's a man aboard with two out. Anything to try and get off those interstates. Abner is one of those young players you mentioned in the deal. Came over from the Mets. Number of prospects involved. The Padres looking for younger players. And the young man had a fine year last year in AAA. And they look forward to him having some good years up in the big leagues. And here's pitcher Jimmy Jones. Abner has not stolen a base. He's been caught once. Two out here and the pitcher up. He's going to be anchored at first base. Mm -hmm. Dobson has Jones in the hole quickly 0-2. Just reared back and blew the fastball by him. Let's see if he goes to the tricks here. Yes, he does. And it works. Strikeout number two for John Dobson, who works much more efficiently and much less wildly than he did in the first inning. A breaking ball to Jimmy Jones, who sits down, but not for long because he'll be back up to pitch for the Expos in the top of the third. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Don't forget the Brenner membership card. 
took one hit in this game, that a two-out single for Sean Abner. The Padres have now left three aboard as John Dobson was a little bit wild in the first and walked a pair. Bottom of the order in Winningham, Foley, and Dobson up to face Jimmy Jones, who's faced the minimum, into the third. In their familiar spots tonight in the coaching boxes, it's Bobby Winkles around at first base, and the third base coach, once again tonight, is Jackie Moore. Herman Winningham will lead things off for the Expos in the top of the third inning. Winningham has a 355 average, somewhat deceiving in that he's only had 31 at-bats this year. He is 11 for 31. And playing in just his seventh game as a starter. Mitch Webster having problems with a toe that he injured in Atlanta. Winningham takes a strike on the outside corner. One ball and a strike. Seems Mitch was trying to steal third, and either he spiked himself or third baseman came down. Holbrookfeld came down on his toe, and he had to have it drained yesterday, relieve the pressure. They drilled a hole in the Ooh. nail, which sounds very oh, uncomfortable. Mm. And Mitch said he was able to walk after that, but maybe not able to play. So Herm is in there tonight. Mitch had been struggling with the bat some anyway, and it's a good look at Mitch with the jacket on right there next to Andres Galarraga, and Winningham swings and misses. Looks like an off-three breaking ball or a straight change. That strikeout number two for Jimmy Jones. Here's a man who only averages three per nine innings, and he's got a couple already. Looks like a straight changeup at Winningham well out in front. Jones has looked sharp, as have all the San Diego starters this season. Ball pitched pretty well. Team hasn't scored runs. Third ball drops in for a strike. If you mention that, because their earned run average this year is 3.82 as a team, which isn't that bad, especially when you compare it to the 5.03 that it was last year this time. Foley has been in the hole. No balls and two strikes as he fouls a pitch off. So the Padres have been getting some pitching. You can't win if you don't get anything on the scoreboard. That's right. And they haven't been winning. They've lost 11 of their last 12. But their record's still better than it was at this time last year. I mean, things couldn't be worse. They're 10 and 22 right now. Last year at this time, they were 7 and 25. Yuck. The Expos having a win one, lose one sort of season now below 515 and 16. And there's strikeout number three for Jimmy Jones, his second consecutively as he gets Tom Foley. Some excellent pitching, mixing it up. Fastball tailing over the outside corner. Tom Foley didn't believe it. But Dave Pallone says it wasn't. That's good enough. Two down. And here's the pitcher John Dobson up to swing a bat. It's rather small in his hands. He's six foot four and 205 pounds. And he stands in as though he knows what he's doing with a bat. Missed on that one, 0 and 1. Although he throws right handed, he's a left handed hitter out of Finksburg, Maryland, which is about, I'd say, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes away from Baltimore. Up towards the Pennsylvania border. 1-1 one, one pitch was outside. 2-1 and one from pitcher to pitcher. The 2-1 pitch to Dobson. On the ground. Rolls right to John Cruck who steps on the bag. Gives the ball to Dobson who will go to the mound and start hurling it towards the Padres. Jimmy Jones has faced the minimum through three. No score Ladies in this ball game from San Diego. This is Labatt Expo Baseball on TSN. Slow starts are becoming far too commonplace for the people around San Diego. You see their equally dismal starts, 0-5. 7 and 25 last year, 10 and 22 right now. So they're a little better after 32 games. 
They really got it together late in the season, though, from the halfway mark on last year. They were one of the best teams in the National League West. See their 20th anniversary sign. Montreal Expos celebrating an anniversary as well. These teams came into the league together in 1969. Alomar, Templeton, and Kruk, top of the order. Up to face John Dobson, bottom of inning number three. The first year in the major leagues, San Diego went 52 and 110. The Expos, curiously enough, that same year in 69, went 52 and 110. They both had tough starts. Greg Riddock, first base coach for the San Diego Padres reminded me tonight that he was in the league when I broke in in 19, way back when, <laughs> in the Florida State League. And he said he remembered me, I think he was with the Yankee organization. And uh, you saw Sal the Alomar at third. Well, this is his son, Roberto Alomar. Greg Riddick managed in the Reds chain for nine years. Now coaching at first base, here's Alomar, who walked to lead things off in the first. Inside ball one. His brother Sandy, the catcher, is six foot five. One zero -oh pitch. Must have been first to the table. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Two and all. Sort of interesting, you know, at a time when catchers seem so hard to find in baseball, everybody's looking for a good young catching prospect. The Padres are in a pretty good position. They have one of the best catchers now in Benito Santiago. They have what they feel is another great catcher on the way in Sandy Alomar. And Mark Parent, who's another young catcher, is the backup now. They may be in a very good position make a great deal but they've got to make sure Sandy Alomar gets to the majors first three and one in the air to center field Winningham and Reigns converge and Winningham will make the catch one away the Labatt player of the game for the Montreal Expos will receive this hand-carved Inuit sculpture presented by H.H. H. Brown, makers of Walkabouts, Canada's new lightweight walking shoes for men. With padded comfort and unique airflow sole, walk a more comfortable mile in Walkabouts by H.H. H. Brown. Veteran Gary Templeton at the plate. It's Dobson's first strike out of the evening. Back in the first inning, ground ball to Foley at short. It's easy to hopper to throw the first is in time and there's two down. So as one might have expected in the early part of this game, few runners on, not much scoring, in fact, none at all. Still scoreless as Dobson and Jones work. Two away now as the third man in the order for the Padres, John Kruk, comes up. He walked in the first and was stranded aboard. Dobson tonight, his breaking ball has been his best pitch. First, second, and third innings, that was the pitch he was getting over with the most consistency. Usually in a young pitcher, that's a pitch that he has trouble with. Of course, Buck Rogers would just love to see Dobson stand out there all night, but what he'd really anticipate and be happy with is what, six innings maybe? Six solid innings. Keep the team in the ball game and hand it over to the pen. And he's settled right now, down now, doing a nice job on the Padres. Gets the ground ball to Johnny Paredes at second base and has his first one, two, three inning here in the third. So there's no score between the Padres and the Expos through three at Jack Murphy Stadium. This is Levat Expos baseball on TSN. Now let's go to TSN Control for this sports update.
no score and just one hit to report. In San Diego, California, the Expos come to the plate in the top of the fourth inning. Tim Raines leading off at the top of the order. Jimmy Jones has faced the minimum through three, worked very quickly and efficiently, and faces Raines here in the top of the fourth. Raines was robbed by Roberto Alomar, one of the best plays we've seen all year, maybe one of the best plays we've ever seen in <laughs> second base. Jones hasn't let any runners get on, and it's probably a good thing if you look at his past. Leadoff hitters hit just 255 against him, but with runners on, opposing batters get up to 317. Well, he's one pitch away from putting a man on here and falls behind range. Three balls and no strikes. You can bet all the donuts in the box that Rains will be taking this next pitch. Strike called three and one. How about this one? <laughs> How many donuts do we bet here? Oh, for those of you fond of pastry, if it's in there, he's going to swing at it. Ball four. First blemish on the record of Jimmy Jones tonight. A walk to Tim Raines to lead off the fourth, and the Expos have a man aboard. And they're... Base, biggest threat on the base paths Tim Raines has stolen 15 bases this year and caught once he's got a formidable catcher behind the plate tonight and Benito Santiago who possesses one of the greatest guns mm -hmm. of any catcher Raines up there in base on balls Cal Daniels very patient hitter leading the league with 26 walks the Santiago he can gun it. He'll gun it from his knees. And he committed 22 errors last year. 12 of them were throwing down to second base to get runners. It can be a little wild, and he'll throw it into center field every now and then. But so far this year, he's caught 48% of the thieves on the base paths trying to get an extra bag. And 48% is a terrific record. Well, most of those errors came at the beginning of the season yeah. when he was just settling in as a rookie. As the season wore on, Santiago got a lot stronger. His Paredes might be looking to protect Reigns with a hit and run. Throw to first. Reigns is back. A solid tag by John Crutch. <laughs> Just about knocked him down. 0 oh 1 to Paredes. Reigns has his lead, fakes the start. Either that or didn't get. A good start had poor footing. You know, although Santiago was rookie of the year, catching is the fastest way to the major leagues, but it's awful tough. You don't know your own pitchers. The veteran pitchers have their own ways of pitching a ball game. You don't always want to listen to a rookie, and the catcher is supposed to be the one to guide him through the rough spots. You don't know the hitters in the league, and you have to almost rely on the information you get from your coaches and pitching coaches and the pitchers. So if you're in a situation where you've got a young pitcher like Jimmy Jones on the mound and a young catcher, who knows what? Fly ball to right field. This is Sean Abner moving over towards the line, and he makes the catch. There's one out. That'll bring Hubie Brooks to the plate. Oh, with the pitching staff throwing that much better this year, I wonder how much of that has to do with the fact that Santiago has a full season in the majors and pitching staff has decided to listen to the dictator. Plus, he is rookie of the year, so that means he was on the ball better than any other first-year player last year. The Padres have been stolen on 18 times this year, but Santiago has caught 17. Reigns with more of a lengthy lead at first base. Is it time to try and depose the dictator behind the plate? Hubie Brooks, the batter, grounded out to third base, back in the first. Another throw over to get Reigns back. And Crook's got a hard tag over there when you hit <laughs> a hard ball in the glove. It's like having a rock in your glove. Reigns took two steps and got back. 
Ball 1-1-0 one, one oh to Hubie Brooks. Slow tempo to this game, especially offensively. They're going to need to start some runners and, and try and open up some holes in the infield and put runners at first and third and that way. Third, no. A base hit into right field for Hubie Brooks, gunned in by Abner to Gary Templeton. And there's runners on first and second with one away. Abner showing a very strong arm out in right field. He threw a rope in there, didn't he? Third baseman, Brent Nettles. Hubie Brooks hitting behind the runner, shoots it right through the hole. The Expo's first hit of the night. Now they have runners at first and second. Greg Nettles, born in San Diego, California, now lives in nearby Del Mar. Nettles has a home run and three RBIs in just 15 at-bats this season. He joined us late, starting tonight for Tim Wallach, who has a bad back. Twisted on Tuesday night in Atlanta. He didn't play Wednesday. Nettles gets back-to-back -back starts at third base. Nettles goes to right field with a base hit. Reigns is rounding third, being waved home. Abner throws the ball in. The Expos lead one to nothing on a base hit by Greg Nettles and runners at first and third with one away. So Greg Nettles comes through on a hanging breaking ball. Jimmy Jones makes one of his poor pitches of the night. He has to pay for it. This all started with a leadoff base on balls to Tim Raines. The Expos break out in front, one to nothing. And a chance to do some more damage against Jimmy Jones, who is perfect through the first three. A leadoff walk. They usually come around to score, don't they? Tim Raines did in this case. And... Jones is working now with runners at first and third and the Expo's most dangerous hitter at the plate. Well, Reigns usually finds one way or another to score, whether he puts himself in scoring position or he relies on his teammates as he did in this instance. The 0-1 pitch to Galarraga had a notion to go after that outside pitch, let it go, and Santiago chases it down. You know, Galarraga hitting so very well and Tim Wallach struggling now out of the lineup. I wondered aloud to Buck Rogers, I wondered if he'd ever considered putting Galarraga into the cleanup position as the hottest batter in the lineup. Just to switch things around, and he said, no, absolutely not, for a couple of reasons. He thinks Wallach will come around as Galarraga fouls one off. And the other thing he says is that Galarraga is in such a groove and hitting so well, he didn't want to mess him up. He thinks sometimes by putting a batter in the cleanup position, he thinks he has to hit home runs, tries to jump on everything. He said Galarraga goes to all fields so well right now that he just wants him to stay right where he, where he is and not have to worry about the cleanup spot and the psychology that goes with it. Pulls this ball. Randy Reddy goes to second for one, down to first for the double play. Just in time, Galarraga's no slouch on the base paths and was a step away. He hits into a double play here. The Expos do get a run on a pair of hits as Tim Raines scored. Nice play around the horn. Ready going to his right. Alomar, there's the reason why the double play. Just in time. Galarraga's foot just above the bag. Great pivot at second base. A 5-4-3 around the horn. Double play. The Expos have a 1-0 lead. This is Labatt. Expos baseball on TSN. Greg Nettles has the only RBI tonight. He's playing for Tim Wallach, who's up and walking around, but not in the lineup tonight because of the bad back, and he hopes to be back tomorrow after twisting the back in Atlanta. Well, uh, it was a ground ball that kind of went to my left a little bit, and I, I had to reach out for it, and I didn't really move my feet when I turned to throw to second base. I just spun and really just strained something in my lower back on the left side. Had a few spasms, and now today it feels a lot better than it has the past couple days, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to get back in there tomorrow night. You got to know that Wallach wants in the lineup in this ballpark. He hit 417 here last year in the six times that the Expos played at Jack Murphy Stadium. But Greg Nettles has done his job in replacing Wallach so far tonight. 
The reason why they got Greg Nettles was uh, every so often give Wallach a spell at third, something they weren't able to do last year, possibly play a little bit of first base, and of course, come off the bench as one of the finer pinch hitters in all of baseball. Middle of the order, Benito Santiago, Randy Reddy, and Carmelo Martinez due up against John Dobson, bottom of the fourth inning in a ball game that's just motoring right along. Santiago hit a fly ball to Hubie Brooks in right field back in the first. Remember I mentioned about the leadoff walk. Yeah. Being a formidable weapon for any team that has a patient hitter at the plate. Now, Benito Santiago is not that type of hitter. Only one walk every 35 at-bats. The lowest rate in the major leagues last year. So he's a free swinger. Maybe not the type of hitter you would want leading off an inning. Ground ball for Foley, the shortstop. And the leadoff man is gone. You notice how well Santiago runs for a catcher. What a great athlete. Steal 20 bases, hit some home runs, throw runners out. An all-round athlete. And he's gone to the dugout right now. One away for Randy Reddy, the third baseman. I guess you could call Reddy uh, one of those Mr. Versatility types. He batted mm -hmm. in every spot in the lineup last year except ninth. Usually, nice. usually managers trying to get something going. There's a butt. Going foul. Just trying to find a way aboard. Reddy has to come back to the plate. Holy smokes, the Orioles won. Is that, well, it has to be true that we have it up there. Four to one. Dave Stewart. Smoke Stewart suffering his first loss of the year. Boston hammers Seattle 14 to 8. Boston hasn't been getting many home runs, but they got a couple in this one. Greenwell, Mike Greenwell with his third and fourth. Rick Cerrone hit one. Sam Horn had one as well. And the Tigers are winners seven to nothing. Doyle Alexander goes to three and two. Alan Trammell, Ray Knight had home runs. 17th career shutout for Doyle Alexander. Here John Dobson is pitching to the San Diego Padres. Randy Reddy with one out of the bottom of the fourth inning. The Expos leading one to nothing. A run on two hits. The Padres... No runs on one hit, and the count is three and one on Randy Reddy. Here's another ground ball for the shortstop Foley, who charges it, throws it, and gets Reddy up two away. John Dobson doing a fine job so far shutting down the Padres like the rest of the league has been able to do early in the season. You take a look at his delivery. Very compact for a big man. Doesn't bring his arms way over his head. And what that will do is cut down the number of mistakes getting off balance before he delivers the ball. I'm sure that's something that the Expos have worked on with him in the minor leagues and pitching coach Larry Bernard has followed up on it after he's come to the majors. Here's Carmelo Martinez. Count is 0-1. Martinez hits one into left field. Bounces to the wall. Reigns takes it off the wall and holds Martinez to a single with a fortunate bounce and a good throw out of left field. That's a long single. A couple of reasons why this ball was... Only a single for Carmelo Martinez. First of all, he hit it pretty hard. He's not that fast a runner. Came right back to Reigns on the ricochet. He makes a strong throw into second base to hold Martinez to a single and keep him out of scoring position with two outs. That's only the tenth hit of the season for Carmelo Martinez in his 63rd at bat. The Padres with a man aboard. Foul ball. Just out of our reach once again. We have to start packing a glove on the road. It's okay by me. 
too late to pick up an error, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the batter is Shane Mack. Has a brother playing in the Expos organization. Plays in the Rookie League at West Palm Beach. His name is Quinn Mack. He's a left fielder. And in fact was two for five last night as West Palm beat Miami 11 to three. <laughs> Martinez at first base and the count is one and two to Mack. Here's a ground ball again, this time for the second baseman. Paredes will go to Foley for the force at second base. And John Dobson gives up his second hit of the night, but works very efficiently again in the fourth. Gets the ground balls that get the Padres out. No runs on a hit, and the Padres leave a man aboard. And the Expos and Dobson have a one to nothing lead after four. This is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN. While Kenny and I were closed up inside a cold hotel room with the curtains closed working today, our camera crew was out on the beach. Yeah, they were. <laughs> this broadcast is presented by authority of the Montreal Baseball Club Limited. It may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Montreal Baseball Club Limited. I'm Jim Houston with Ken Singleton at Jack Murphy Stadium not far from the beach in San Diego, California, where the Expos lead the Padres one to nothing as they play game number four on this 12-game swing through the West Division. They lost a series in Atlanta that they probably should have won. Lost two of three games there. Play in San Diego, and after that, it really gets tough. To Los Angeles and the new-look Dodgers, that'll be a tough time for Montreal. And then up to San Francisco to play the defending West Division champion, San Francisco Giants. Jeff Reed takes strike two. The count is a ball and two strikes. Leading off the top half of the fifth inning with the Expos leading one to nothing. Reed, of course, is the Expos' number one catcher now with Mike Fitzgerald sent to the minors, and Fitzgerald is now re reported to AAA Indianapolis. What does he get, 72 hours after an assignment to report? Something like I used to have in school when I got my homework. <laughs> Pitch ball four. The Expos have another leadoff man on second inning in a row that Jimmy Jones has walked the first man. Tim Raines last inning came around to score the Expos only run. You're talking about that series in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That was the first series that the Braves have won all year. They're the reason the Padres aren't in last place in the West. You have visions of contention. You can't lose to teams like Atlanta and San Diego, especially while they're struggling. Speaking of struggling, Toronto loses to Chicago. You have visions of contention in the American League East. You don't lose to Chicago very often. Last year, the walks really hurt the Padres staff. Winningham is behind 0-2. San Diego pitchers, for the last two years, have given up the most home runs in the league. Last year, 175 of them. But they also gave up the most walks. What a deadly combination. Ooh. You walk a guy, and the next guy puts it over the fence, and you're in big trouble. Little better this year, though. Talked about the pitching staff being better. They've given up 26 home runs. There are four teams who have given up more than that in the National League. And with the two walks tonight, San Diego pitchers have walked 103, and there are seven teams in the National League that have walked more than that. 
course, the Expo pitching staff was the best in league, or stingiest, I should say. Ground ball in the right field for a base hit for Winningham. Reed will stop at second. Run, runners on first and second with nobody out. The Expos, of course, last year were the stingiest as far as allowing base runners via the walk and makes it more difficult for the opposing team to score. And the Expos are in business again. As Jeff Reed leads off with a walk and Winningham follows with a base hit through that hole. This time with nobody out. The Expos have a runner in scoring position and Tom Foley is in a position to collect an RBI. He has eight on the season. Three of them game winners. He's had some key hits, although he hasn't had many. Ordinarily in a situation like this, nobody out runners at first and second. You might be expecting a bunt, but on deck is pitcher John Dobson. So that's why Tom Foley's swinging away. Trying to get some offensive offense generated out of the a spot in the order. Pop up for the third baseman Randy Reddy. Foul territory makes the catch. Pitcher. Now here's where you might expect the bunt. Even with one out, to avoid a double play situation, Dobson might be called upon the bunt. Right now you see him looking down the third base line at Coach Jackie Moore. We're just looking at the standings here as Jackie Moore relays some information to Jeff Reed. There's a play put on by the Padres. The bunt is down. Kruk looks towards third. The only play he has is to Roberto Alomar, who's covering first base, and the sacrifice is successful. Play going three to four as John Dobson gets the job done. Good sacrifice bunt. Dobson helps himself, gets runners up to second and third, executing the fundamentals. You were looking at the standing. Yes, and if you notice, a team that has very quietly moved into second place in the American League East, the Detroit Tigers. Mm -hmm. Been very steady. They won again, beat Minnesota tonight, seven to nothing. So, Tigers are now 21 and 12. This is a situation that's becoming all too familiar to the Expos. Tim Raines had a record 26 intentional walks for Montreal last year. This is his eighth of this season. He'll be put aboard so they can pitch to Johnny Paredes. And as Buck Rogers said before the game, it's happened once this year that Reigns has been intentionally walked and Paredes has come to the plate to burn the opposition. He's got to do it a few more times. I think any time you get a chance to put Tim Reigns on base, you're going to do it. Number 15. Whether the, the hitter behind him is hot or not. In this case, being a rookie just compounds the fact that they're just going to put him on. Now, would that change, do you think, if, for example, Mitch Webster got hot as he can and he was hitting up around 300, it might not be such a wise decision. It might not be such an easy decision. Exactly. But right now, when you have a rookie, it's almost no decision at all. It's just to hold out that hand and put him on first base. Reigns has walked twice, once intentionally. Bases are loaded for Johnny Paredes in a 1-0 Expo lead. Top of the fifth inning, and the rookie has a chance to get high fives all around in the dugout. He can really do some damage to the Padres here and win the confidence of his manager. Sharp breaking ball, swung on and missed. Brady's now behind on the count. No balls and two strikes. That pitch was actually out of the strike zone. Watch where the ball ends up. Santiago has a target low and away, and it's very low and away, almost in the dirt. So now Paredes is in trouble. 0 and 2, 2 away. And with the bases loaded and two away, the intentional walk to Reigns works out perfectly for Larry Boa and the San Diego Padres. 
strikeout number four for Jimmy Jones as Johnny Paredes goes down with the bases loaded. The Expos lead remains at one to nothing. One pitch low and away, throw it again. See if he'll swing at it. He certainly did. He helps out Jimmy Jones, gets him out of an inning. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Night has come to San Diego and the West Coast, where night comes last. You know, it really is a tough ballpark to see, and the batters say that the first at bat in Jack Murphy Stadium is extremely tough because the sun is still up, going down in the West, and the light creates all sorts of problems. It won't be so bad now in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Padres coming up, and it's dark. The Padres will come up and try and Get a few late night hits off of John Dobson. Get something going. They're down one to nothing. This ballpark has been really conducive to the strikeout. It has the greatest effect on, effect on the strikeout ratio of most teams. They come here and end up striking out a lot. I think there are particular reasons for that. Why does everybody strike yeah. out at Jack Murphy? I think maybe one of the reasons is because of the home run hitting last year, last couple of years, and they've moved the fences in here. Over the season, you see that inner fence. It used to be you had to hit the ball over that outer wall to get a home run. Very difficult. And since they moved that inner fence in, everybody's swinging for the fences. There's a good look at it. Now it's only 327 down the line, 370 in the gaps, 405 the straightaway center. You see that outer wall. That was quite a poke to hit a home run here. Remember before they put the inner fence in, trying to get more home runs, they painted a line on the wall here, and you had to hit the ball above the line to get a home run. Here's a ground ball for third baseman Greg Nettles. And Sean Abner, the leadoff man in the bottom of the fifth, is gone for the Padres. That was one of the beneficiaries of over-the-line home runs. Boy, I bet there were some arguments oh, over that. Tremendous arguments. Here's the pitcher, Jimmy Jones, to face John Dobson. I suppose the fact that it is hard to see in the first at-bat here with the sun going down adds to the number of strikeouts at this stadium. You said the Padres uh, allowed the what, most home runs in the league last year. 175. And right now on a ball club that doesn't have much power. I was thinking about that before the game. It'd be something like the lookout inside for a ball. And is one and two and one now. Padres go to a ball club like the old Minnesota Twins with you know, Armand Killebrew. Uh, they had some big, powerful hitters, Bob Allison. Then again, that wouldn't work in the National League because you definitely need some speed, and those guys were big plow horse type hitters. Yeah. You got to get a little bit of everything. You, know, you need a home run hitter, too. You need the speedsters. Tom Foley's been a busy man tonight. Lots of ground balls. This is John Dobson induces the Padres Second to ground out Roberto and Alomar. there's two away now both on ground balls and top of the order Roberto Alomar is up for the San Diego Padres Alomar has walked and fly to Herm Winningham in center field signed as a free agent in 85 born in Puerto Rico Alomar lays down the bunt Nettles picks it up and throws him out very efficient inning for John Dobson who's now through five for the Expos and looking better all the time. He gets the Padres in order and has a one to nothing lead to work with. Six pitches for Dobson in that inning. That's efficient. This is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN. Now let's go to TSN control for another sports update. From Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The Expos lead one to nothing as Jimmy Jones faces Brooks Nettles and Galarraga in the top of the sixth inning. A lot of connections to the 1982 baseball draft tonight. Jimmy Jones, the man you're watching pitch, was drafted early in the 82 draft. In fact, there were only two pitchers taken ahead of Dwight Gooden in that year. Jimmy Jones was one of them. The other is a guy by the name of Brian Elkers, who's just recently signed with the Montreal Expos and reported to AAA. The other pitcher in tonight's game John Dobson was drafted 45th in that same 82 draft. 
Randy Reddy bounces one up to get Hubie Brooks one away. Nice play by John Cruck at first base. Watch the throw by Reddy. This has error written it all over it until Cruck pulls it out of the dirt. The lone peanut vendor. All right. <laughs> Entertainment capital of the world, Southern California. Another starving artist. Well, he's not starving. He's got peanuts. The phantom of the ballpark. <laughs> Greg Nettles, the processor of the only RBI in this ball game. Turned on a breaking ball. Back in the fourth inning for the Expos on the board. Nettles, of course, one of the best fastball hitters. Game has ever seen 390 career home runs, but this time he's retired unassisted by John Truck at first base. Jimmy Jones has two away, two very dangerous batters for the Montreal Expos and Brooks and Nettles, and here's the most dangerous Andres Galarraga. That double play took the Expos out of chance to score more than one run in that fourth inning. Well, Galarraga hit the ball hard. He hit it right at Randy Reddy. The third time this year that Galarraga has grounded into a double play. The Expos lead the league in grounding into double plays. One and one to Galarraga. Two away. Top of the sixth inning from San Diego, and 1 0 Montreal is leading. Game one of a three game series. Galarraga goes the other way, gets a hit into right field. That's you, what you were talking about, manager Buck Rogers saying Galarraga using the whole field to get his base hits. Watch him fight this one off. Strong hitter. That pitch was just about even with him when he swung at it. Still was able to force it off into right field for a base hit. It's the fourth hit off of Jimmy Jones. Every one of them has been a single into right field. It threw that hole. Galarraga's on his way to second base, and he's out. Delayed steal, and Santiago made the throw down to Templeton. And gets his 18th thief of the season. Galarraga had a pretty good jump, but watch Santiago. He doesn't fall asleep. Guns it down to second. Templeton, a little late, has to tag on the run, but does indeed get Galarraga. Another look at it. Watch Santiago bounce up and hurl it. Hang your clothes out on that throw. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Hi, I'm Dave Engel. I grew up here in San Diego. If you want to call up and talk about San Diego, I'm your man. If you want to call and talk about the Expos, I'm your man. Call me, collect, extra innings. Immediately following the game tonight, Dave Engel will be our guest, 416-445-1811. The number to note to call, collect. Immediately following this game to speak with Dave Engel. May or may not become a part of this game, but we'll see him. <laughs> He's happy tonight. <laughs> we'll see him at some point in this coast trip. Always do. He gets in as a pinch hitter. Just whistling along as yep. John Dobson is leading one to nothing here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Whistling a happy tune, I'm sure. Dobson looking for his first major league victory if he can hang on. Has allowed just two hits, both to the bottom of the order. A single to Carmelo Martinez, another single to Sean Abner. And fortunately for the Expos and Dobson, they didn't come together, so caused no harm. And Templeton, the leadoff man in the bottom of the sixth for the Padres. Gary Templeton moved up in the order. 
Most of the time you found him in that number eight slot. Right in front of the pitcher. When we talk about Tim Raines getting intentional base on balls. Gary Templeton. Has gotten 79 intentional walks in the last four years. Yikes. Almost 20 a year. He'd gladly be walked against Montreal. He's one for 29 last season against Montreal. His career average is 244 against the Expos. His third lowest against all of the other 11 other National League teams. Three balls, no strikes. Here's Tim Raines who knows the feeling of what an intentional walk is like. That's life in the number eight spot. Intentional walks. A little different story for Reigns, though. He's got a rookie behind him. Yeah. Three and one. This walk was not intentional, but it's a walk just the same for Gary Templeton, and the Padres have the leadoff man aboard for the first time since the first inning. The Labatt player of the game for the Padres tonight will receive a weed eater. String trimmers that edge and blowers that bead raking. Garden and yard care the convenient way from Weed Eater. The third walk issued by John Dobson, his first since the first inning. But again, it goes to a leadoff hitter. That means you're looking for problems especially with the heart of their lineup coming up Andy McGaffigan quickly loosening up in the bullpen party's over it's time for the committee to start meeting or maybe soon McGaffigan up just in case 1-0 to John Cruck plate is starting to move around on the youngster as Kruk peers down for a sign. Dobson's only thrown one strike this inning. And quickly, Bernarth is to the mound. Wants to talk to Dobson, wants to buy a little time as McGavigan warmed up in the pen. No. Templeton on first. 27 year old John Cruck from Kaiser, West Virginia. Ball three. Dobson appears to be overthrowing. Maybe getting a little tired, can't get the ball down in the strike zone. He walks two in a row. Remember how compact he was early in the game? Appears to be the same thing. Maybe always striding a bit. But he's going to have a long stride at six foot four. Manager Buck Rogers. Not sitting down anymore. Nor is Andy McGaffigan. Eight of the last nine pitches have been for balls. First and second, the tying run in scoring position for the cleanup man, Benito Santiago, with nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. Strike one thrown by Dobson. Gary Templeton representing the tying run at second base, John Cruck at first. Situation like this, you would hope that Dobson would not take anything off of his fastball just to get it over the plate. That's when you're asking for trouble. Santiago goes the other way. Foul. The runners on the base paths have just now found out that's foul. John Cruck is around third and now making his way back over the first. Templeton goes back to second. Well, Santiago now down. No balls, two strikes in the count. Talking it over with Dave Pallone.
So Santiago hit that ball down the right field line. Yubi Brooks took a couple of steps towards the line. And Herm Winningham is now signaling to Yubi that don't worry about it. Move over towards the line. I'll cover the gap in right center. Maybe and he can. <laughs> Certainly can. There's another foul ball down the right side. I think what Herman is trying to tell Yubi is that with two strikes, Santiago might be cutting down his swing be more apt to hit the ball to the right side. So take a few steps to the right and I'll cover for you. Lots of room in right center. Pitches high ball one one and two. Dobson nursing a one nothing lead has now thrown 70 pitches. One two pitch hit back to Dobson goes to second for one over to first for two the double play Gary Templeton advances to third Benito Santiago didn't even want to touch that ball but he knocked it back to Dobson who helps himself out immensely. The key to this play is the throw to second base remember Santiago gets down the line pretty well for a catcher watch the throw right on the money across the bag Tom Foley takes it in stride. Gets it over the first in time for the double play. Two outs and a runner on third. And a 1-6-3 double play for the Expos. But the tying run is on third base and Randy Reddy is the batter. Ball one. Randy Reddy, formerly of the Milwaukee Brewers organization before coming over to San Diego. There's Gary Templeton with his lead off third. Look out. Ooh. Wild high and inside. 2 and 0. Oh. Breaking ball that got away from John Dobson. Dobson's delivery is just not smooth at all now. That was a fastball. Reddy would not have been able to get out of the way. The 2 0 pitch. Strike one. So John Dobson, who struggled a bit in the first with his control, settled down through the little four innings. Now in the sixth is struggling to get out of it. Walk two, got a double play ball as a runner on third and throws low and away. Ball three. Jeff Reed moving around. Quite a bit this inning up and in, down and away. Where's it coming next? What a man on third. He's got to be alive. Time is called. <laughs> Three one pitches for a strike. And he nails a fastball like that right on the corner <laughs> on the knees. Yeah, that's more like it. Jeff's saying behind the plate. Well, you wonder what Reddy's saying. You know, this guy almost hit me, threw one in the dirt, and all of a sudden he paints a pitch on the outside corner. The inconsistencies of a, a young pitcher. He lost him. Walk number five in the third of this inning for John Dobson. Ray wants to settle him down. I'm sure Buck Rogers just wants him to get out of this inning. This jam that he's in. And perhaps turn the ball over to the bullpen. Take a look at Jeff Reed trying to get Dobson through this. A veteran catcher talking to a young pitcher. But you know Andy McGaffigan is ready. And I believe if he doesn't get Martinez out. Whether he walks him or gives yeah. up a hit. This could be his last hitter. If he gets him out he might stand in there for another inning. Templeton over at third. Ready at first. Well, if he loses Martinez and the bases are loaded, I don't think Rogers would gamble with his wildness that he might walk a runner in. He's probably right that Martinez could possibly be, could be his last hit. Yeah. 
You know, not much happening for the Padres offensively. Does manager Larry Boa start ready at first? Trying to get a double steal situation. Pitch just misses. Cat evens up at one and one. Bullpen is quiet. McGaffigan is sufficiently warm. Sandy Alomar third. 1-1 one, one pitch to Carmelo Martinez, who has one of two hits off John Dobson by the Padres tonight. Hit hard into left field. Reigns is back. It's off the wall. The tying run is in. Rennie races over to third base. Carmelo Martinez has his second hit of the night. A double. And the game is tied. Martinez hitting this ball about where he hit the last shot when he had a single in the fourth inning. But this time he gets it over the head of Reigns once again. Ball does not come off the wall quite as quickly. And he's able to pick up the double and a run batted in. And Buck Rogers is coming to the mound, and that's probably it for John Dobson. John Dobson just lost his control. Gave up only three hits, but he walked five, three of them, in this sixth inning. And the leadoff walk to Gary Templeton has come around to haunt him. Templeton has scored. So Rogers takes the ball. Dobson leaves the game, and the ball will go to Andy McGaffigan. So Dobson cannot be the winner. But he can be the loser in this ball game as McGaffigan comes in for the bullpen, making his 17th appearance of the season. McGaffigan comes in and will warm up. This pitching change is brought to you by Remington. Andy McGaffigan on for John Dobson. The 24-year-old goes for five and two-thirds. The two runners on are his responsibility. Dobson threw 80 pitches, gave up just three hits, struck out two, but walked five. And here's McGaffigan to try and pick him up and get out of this sixth inning. That wildness, of course, led to his downfall. Funny, you know, because he walked two in the first inning, and then he seemed to settle right down. He had one, two, three innings in the third and the fifth, and was very efficient, efficient at getting the ground balls from the Padres. Meeting of the outfielders, Brooks, Winningham, and Reigns. And I'll tell you, when I was in on those meetings, usually talking over how poorly the pitchers have functioned for our club. <laughs> <laughs> and what are we going to do to get us back in the game? Now, giving the ball to the Expo bullpen has usually been a cure for a lot of things. This is a very strong bullpen, and John Dobson knows that. There'll be some parts of his performance tonight that he'll be pleased with. And his pitching coach and manager will be pleased with. Picking up a little bit more poise each and every time out. But he leaves Randy Reddy at third. Then Carmelo Martinez at second. Martinez with two of the three hits off of Dobson. Here's Shane Mack as McGaffigan goes to work at the bottom of the order. The number seven man is 0 for 2. McGaffigan's first pitch is a ball, 1-0. Andy has done some struggling. 25 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 31 hits. And allowed 11 runs. Opposing batters have hit 290 against him overall. He'd like that to come down. It's very unlike McGaffigan. Fastball swing and a miss. So quickly he jumps ahead of Shane Mack. Fastball. Mack was trying to send that to the beach. 
Unfortunately, it didn't come to the plate looking like a beach ball. The one two pitch is outside. Reed has it. Nice shift by Jeff Reed. Expecting a breaking ball. You saw the crossover step. Has Reed ever matured as a catcher this season? Throwing runners out. He's 12 for 19. And throwing runners out. Trying to steal. He's a good receiver. And he started to hit. The 2-2 pitch from McGaffigan fouled off by Mack. You know, when Reed and Santiago tonight, you, you think of a catcher, you think of a big lumbering sort of player. Well, Reed and Santiago are certainly not built that way and show cat-like quickness behind the plate. Reed flashes the signals to Andy McGaffigan. Second and third, two out. And it's a Mac attack. Two runs are in. And the Padres have a 3-1 lead. A single and two RBIs for Shane Mack. Well, this is where the Padres have sorely lacked offense all season long, but they come out with a pair of two out base hits. First, a, a double by Carmelo Martinez, and then a base hit by Shane Mack to drive in two runs and give them the lead. Manager Larry Boa let me smiling a bit more as Shane Abner or Sean Abner comes to the plate. Three runs for the Padres. Mack is off and running. Reed is throwing it and hit Mack, who's safely in with the stolen base. First of the season for Shane Mack. Mack with a comfortable lead, not really too big, but he's off and running. Straight steel does not look to see where the ball is going, whether it was hit or not. Right in between the legs of Johnny Paredes, and he's in for the stolen base. Now, here's how you take the bat out of your number eight hitter's hand. You have the man steal. Abner will get the intentional pass, so the Expos McGaffigan can pitch to Jimmy Jones. Not a good move right here by having him steal. You know you're going to see the pitcher at the plate. I don't know whether Mac took off on his own. Number 45, Jim Jones. So it looks good and the fans like it, but it's not necessarily the great thing to do. Well, it's one way to get your pitcher out of the way and maybe not leading off the next inning. Mm hmm. Another way to look at it. So there have been four base on balls issued by the Expos in the sixth inning. Just one of them intentionally. Two hits. Three runs are in. And a 1-0 Expo lead has evaporated. It's turned into a 3-1 lead for the San Diego Padres. As Jones takes a cut and misses 0-2. will advance a base is McGaffigan what did he do watch him watch him start and then stop his motion right there that's a ball started towards the plate and then stepped off that's an old-fashioned block not necessarily what they're looking for this year all the fans in the stadium called that one right away everybody started shouting the word balk Jimmy Jones fouls this one back out of play. First time this year McGaffigan's been caught balking. 
The 0-2 pitch fouled off by Jones. Scramble for the ball, and Buck Rogers is going to have to see his team scramble for a few more runs. It comes down to the late innings of the ball game. Jimmy Jones has had some good swings. I would not throw him a breaking ball, though. It's a little bit slower of a pitch. He might be able to get around. Fastball on the inner half. Grounded to Galarraga at first. So the box doesn't hurt and the intentional pass works out, but some damage is done off of Dobson and McGaffigan. Three runs come in on two hits. Two are left aboard. Dobson can't win it, but he can lose it. The Padres lead 3-1. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Jimmy Jones will face Jeff Reed. To lead things off in the top of the sec seventh inning. Backhanded stab by Alomar makes it look easy as he throws out Reed. Alomar going to his right once again. He's shown that he can do this very well. Goes to one knee. Braces himself and makes a strong throw the first in time to Number get Jeff Reed. Sandy Alomar. His dad was an infielder too. Second baseman shortstop. Here's Herm Winningham who has one of four hits off of Jimmy Jones. Hits have been at a premium here tonight. A strikeout and a single for Winningham. Who was stranded aboard in the fifth. Jimmy Jones is beneficiary of a three-run rally for the Padres. Now his job is to throw strikes. Not try and come apart with the Expos trailing by two in the top of the seventh. Having played a couple of extra inning games in Chicago, the Padres would like to get as much as they can out of Jones. And save the bullpen. But wins have been hard to come by, so if Larry Bo has to get somebody up, he'll do it. Well, right now, he's got double barrel action in the bullpen as Bobby Winkles keeps that ball in play. It's Greg Booker, the right hander, and Keith Comstock, the left hander on the left. One away here. The count is two and two in the top of the seventh inning. Three and two. Expos have four hits off of Jones. He has struck out four. Uh, make that five. Jimmy Jones, it's like he threw a fastball on the outer half of the plate. Jones last season had a nine and seven record for the Padres as he faces Tom Foley. But he had a very poor record against Eastern Division teams. He might have been one of the best in, in the West at 8-1, but he was <laughs> the least in the East with a 1-6 and six mark against the Eastern Division. Owen oh 2 Jones is well out in front of Tom Foley. Two away, top of seven. The Expos need a rally. Fouled out of play.
one and two. Waiting in the on-deck circle for the Expos, and just in case Tom Foley should continue keep this seventh inning alive is Tim Wallach trying to loosen up that back. Fly ball left center. Carmelo Martinez makes the catch. Another one, two, three inning for Jimmy Jones. He's given up four hits, but he's scattered them. Only had two consecutive hits in the fourth, and the Expos got a run. But he looks good here. He gets a ground ball, a strikeout, and a fly ball. And the Padres have given him a 3-1 lead. Time for the seventh inning stretch. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. near the beach where it's cooled off considerably and isn't at all beach weather now but it will be tomorrow still nice to be out of doors isn't it and be able to you notice I was yeah, yeah, you the sweater sweater out, yeah. was that because you're colder you wanted to cover up that shirt you're wearing <laughs> maybe a little bit of both <laughs> uh, just so happy to be in a short sleeve shirt again I'm gonna leave the sweater off all night Friday night in San Diego. The Expos will play the entire weekend here. Tomorrow will be Dennis Martinez against Ed Whitson. Sunday, Bryn Smith against Andy Hawkins. Our next game will be Tuesday in Los Angeles. And we'll get to see Fernando Valenzuela against Neil Heaton. Two lefties. Tomorrow night here in San Diego. Be beach towel night, so she'll be oh, back right. to get her beach towel, I'm sure. I'll be rushing down to get one of those myself. A beach towel, that is? Yes, that's exactly what I meant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Three to one, Padres. Trying to kick sand in the face of the Expos tonight. Top of the order for the Padres here in the bottom of the seventh. Alomar Templeton and John Crook. Facing McGaffigan. Alomar is a switch hitter who started the night batting 300 from the left side against right-handed pitchers. 253 average isn't great, but no slouch for a rookie. And if a guy's got a glove like he does, it's quite all right to bat around 253. But it looks like he's capable of much higher numbers than that. One and one from Andy McGaffigan. So the book is closed on John Dotson. Five and two-thirds innings, three runs, three hits, two strikeouts, and five walks. Switch hitting Alomar swings and misses on a fastball. The count evens up at two and two. Six feet, 155 pounder. Salinas, Puerto Rico. There ever been two brothers and a father on the field at the same time? I guess the Ripkins. That's about it. It's only two left now is Rip yeah. Senior. Another foul ball out of play. Roberto's dad spent 15 years in the major leagues. Compiled a 245 lifetime average. It's a fine utility infielder for the Angels. Another foul ball out of play. So Alomar is turning this into ball night. That's a fourth <laughs> foul ball. And eight pitches to the plate. Count is two and two. Bottom of the seventh, three one lead for the Padres. Strikeout number one for Andy McGaffigan. Shortstop. Jerry Templeton. 
Well, he finally threw one that he couldn't make contact on. Fastball tailing away. A swing and a miss. He stayed with the fastball. And Templeton, who walked and scored in the sixth. Hard cut that misses. Candy Sierra, number 53, right-handed pitcher, warming up. Wonder if its friends call him high. Only when he's wild. High out of the strike zone. High Sierra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One and two with one away. Gary Templeton, the batter. Here's the one-two pitch. Slider in on the hands. They appeal to third base umpire Tom Hallion. No. Not this time. Templeton, of course, was traded for Ozzie Smith at 82. They just swapped teams, St. Louis and San Diego. They've gone in opposite directions. Ozzie's average has gone way up from 200 to 300. He's been stealing more bases. Templeton was a 300 hitter three times in St. Louis. His average has gone straight down to 222 last year. Used to steal a lot of bases and doesn't do that anymore. He's had knee problems as Winningham takes the fly ball to center. But one thing Templeton did accomplish years gone by he was the first switch hitter to get 100 hits on each side of the plate during a regular season. But not there as Winningham takes the fly out to center field. Two away. Here's John Cruck. A lot of stories about Cruck when he first came up to the major leagues. Of course, he's from a small town in West Virginia, and he said the first time that he ever met somebody that he didn't know was when he <laughs> went away to play professional ball. <laughs> That's a small town. Yeah. Kaiser, West Virginia. For those of you who don't know much about West Virginia, it's kind of a, a state with a lot of hills and valleys, deep valleys, tall mountains and Appalachians. And you can become very isolated in those small towns. That might be a reason why uh, Kaiser had trouble meeting strangers. And a lot of times they have problems with television reception because they are in the deep valleys. But Kruk, no problems getting on base here. Second walk given up by Andy McGaffigan. The first one was intentional. That's the third walk to John Cruck tonight. And seven walks by Expo pitchers. Two of them have come around to score. That two being the difference in the game right now at three to one San Diego. And here's Benito Santiago. Twenty three year old from the Dominican Republic. The 34 game hitting streak last year was almost carried over to this year. Oral Hershiser broke up the hitting streak. The second last day of the season. Santiago came back on the last day to get two hits to finish with an even 300 batting average. There goes Kruk. A little looper in the right field. It's going to fall in. Kruk. He's going to be sent home. And Brooks couldn't pick up the ball. It's four to one San Diego. Thanks to Santiago. Remember what we said at the beginning of the game, manager 
Larry Boa having to start the runners to get some offense going. Crux sees the ball fall in. Now turns it on. Sandy Alomar is going to send him home. Crux will score on a little looper beyond first base. It'll go for a double and a run batted in for Santiago. A broken bat double drives in a run. That's a long run for Crux. This one falls in. Another run is coming in. Santiago cruises in. Randy Reddy rounding second on his way to third. It's a triple and another run in for the Padres. They're up five to one. Randy Reddy also going to the opposite field. This one stroke with more authority and into the corner. Yubi Brooks with a long run. The ball about a foot and a half fair and into the Expo bullpen. And when you get in there, there's benches and all sorts of things. Makes it difficult to pick up the ball. Ready with a stand-up triple and an RBI. So McGaffigan still having problems. He said opposing hitters were hitting 290. And that average has gone up a little bit tonight. That's the third hit off of Andy McGaffigan. The Expos are down by four. That brings some more action to the bullpen. And this time it's Floyd Yeomans. Banished to the pen, the fifth starter. Here's Carmelo Martinez, who's two for three. A double, a single, a run scored, and an RBI. A key RBI double in the sixth inning to put the Padres in the lead. There's Floyd Yeomans, who's not very happy about being in the bullpen, but up working nonetheless. Quoted in a newspaper today as saying, if they don't want me to start, trade me. But I don't know if Floyd's value would be what it once was. Here's a hard hit ball by Martinez to right field. It's back and it's gone. A home run for Carmelo Martinez. And the Padres lead 7-1. to one. The last three hitters, a double, a triple, and a home run. Martinez with enough power to reach the fences and all parts of the ballpark goes to the opposite field. This is his second home run of the year. Gives him three RBIs on the night. He only had three all season long. Yeah. And all of this with two out. McGaffigan struck out Alomar. Got a fly ball from Templeton to center field, but then he walked John Cruck. A double by Santiago, a triple by Reddy, a home run by Martinez, and a fly ball to the right fielder Hubie Brooks off the bat of Shane Mack. But the Padres are out front by six, and the fans are on their feet applauding the low-scoring Padres, who have scored big tonight, particularly of Andy McGavigan. Four runs in the seventh inning on three hits, including a homer. For Carmelo Martinez, this is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. The Expos had to know they were going to be in trouble tonight when a sure base hit was taken away from Tim Raines to lead off the game. Watch Roberto Alomar, the rookie second baseman of the Padres, making a play that will make every highlight reel. And he throws out Tim Raines, and the game was scoreless. John Dobson and Jimmy Jones working well into the fourth. In the fourth inning, though, Greg Nettles playing for Tim Wallach tonight. After a walk to Raines and a single to Brooks, hit a single that scored a run, and the Expos had a one to nothing lead. But after John Dobson had walked three batters in the sixth inning, the Padres struck. Martinez with a double to score a run. That single by Shane Mack scored two. An insult to injury is added in inning number seven. Three consecutive hits off of Andy McGaffigan. This blow from Carmelo Martinez, his second home run, his 
second and third RBIs of the night. And the San Diego Padres have built a 7-1 lead with a three-run sixth and a four-run seventh. We pick it up here in the top half of the eighth inning. As you see, the Expos down 7-1. This is Mitch Webster pinch hitting, and he gets a base hit into center field. Webster pinch hitting for Andy McGaffigan. The Expos start the long road back with Webster on first. That's hit number five off of Jimmy Jones, the first one that hasn't gone into right field. Top of the order, Top of the order and Reigns is up. Thirteen thousand seven hundred and seven. The attendance tonight at Jack Murphy Stadium. Reigns hits a fly ball into shallow left. Carmelo Martinez over. And there's one away. So Jimmy Jones, after giving the base hit to Mitch Webster, settles down, gets Tim Reigns on a lazy fly ball to left field. And that'll bring up Johnny Paredes. Remember back in the fifth inning with the Expos attempting to extend their lead. Paredes at bat with the bases loaded. And struck out. Little key things in ball games can turn it around. A hit just right at, at the right situation. Something the Padres haven't been getting all season long until tonight. Yes, the whole four-run rally in the seventh for the Padres came with two outs. Their rally in the sixth inning for three runs came with two outs. Count is one and two on Johnny Paredes. Up the middle for Jones. A try for two to Templeton for one. Back to Crock for two. Double play. Mitch Webster gets a single. Reigns flies out and Johnny Paredes hits the double play ball. And it's a 1-6-3 double play. Jimmy Jones and the Expos walk off the field for the eighth. 7-1 Padres. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Hi, I'm Hubie Brooks of the Expos. We'll be playing the Dodgers, my hometown, Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time on TSN. And we'll be there to see the Dodgers. Fernando Valenzuela against Neil Heaton. As TSN Baseball goes Hollywood. 10 Eastern. And we'll bring you two games in the Los Angeles series, then up to San Francisco, and bring you two games from Candlestick Park as well as the Expos continue their West Coast trip. They had a great first trip last year. Went six and three in the nine games on the West Coast. They'll have to go a lick now to get it going on this trip. You count Atlanta at the start of this trip. They're one and two into tonight and down seven to one. And there'll be a new pitcher. Floyd Yeomans, his first relief appearance. Floyd Yeomans brings an 0-3 mark, a hefty 5.24 earned run average to the mound. And you talk about Floyd saying that he doesn't want to come out of the bullpen or trade me. Here's one way to earn your way out and back into the starting rotation, making some good appearances out of the bullpen. So Floyd kind of in the doghouse of manager Buck Rogers, if Buck has a doghouse, which I really don't think so. Yeomans in his last start. Here's a ground ball charged by Tom Foley. And everything's going wrong for the Expos now. Tough play by Foley. Abner has pretty good speed, and in fact, this is going to be ruled a base hit. Although a good throw might have had Abner. Going to get the hometown scoring decision. Mm -hmm. 
and collect a base hit. And An infield single. And when you come into the ball game hitting 160, you'll certainly take it. Here's Jimmy Jones back at the plate with a runner on first base. I was talking about Yeoman's last start, which was last Sunday at home against the Houston Astros, and he had his best fastball of the season. He was consistently, for the first four innings, up around 92 miles an hour. He had control. He was perfect through the first four, but then it just fell apart. He started walking batters. He got angry about not getting calls. And he got tossed from the game and tossed from the rotation. Infielders on the corners coming in looking for the bunt. Nettles and Galarraga in close to Jones. Two balls and a strike. Fly ball to Hubie Brooks. Abner's back to first, one away. Second baseman, number 12, Roberto Alvarez. So something the Padres haven't been used to of late, a six-run lead. Their top run production in any game this year has been six. They've only done that twice. Almost scored as many runs as they did on their entire road trip. Nine runs in seven games. They've got seven runs tonight against the Expos. The Expos were a cure for the Atlanta Braves hitting woes, it seemed, too, in the three days they stopped there. One and one count, one away. Runner on first base is Abner. Ball two, two and one. Abner and Alomar, two of the Padre youngsters that played winter ball in Puerto Rico. Ground ball towards the middle. And into center field for a base hit. Sean Abner holds it second. Padres pick up their ninth hit of the game. And there's runners at first and second with one away. In fact, a number of the youngsters, as I mentioned, had played Shane Mack, played winter ball, Sean Abner, pitchers Eric Nolte, Dave Leeper, infielder Joey Cora, Cora is now in the, in the minor leagues. The Padres with a very young ball club. The exception of a few veterans like Templeton. Carmelo Martinez. Tony Gwynn when he's in the lineup. hits the ball into left field. Caught by Reigns. He'll chase the runners back two away. You know, it went out for a while. It didn't look much like the Padres scoring machine would be. Even with him in the lineup, they weren't scoring. Now imagine what they're going to be like when he's out of the lineup. They score seven runs tonight. <laughs> so a plus for the Padres. Well, Gwynn hit 370 last year. Wasn't even a race in the National League. It's the highest since Stan Musial hit 376 in 1948. What, 39 years ago? Almost 40 years, yeah. Almost 40. One and 0 to John Cruck. Two and 0. Crux 
Clark has been walked three times. Grounded out in his other appearance at the plate. You know, the verge of drawing another walk here. It's one of those players I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago with the good eye, good batting eye, he and Vaughn Hayes. Tim Raines work their way on base. Don't swing at too many bad pitches. Takes a strike right here, and the count goes to three and one. Cruck hits the ball well to the opposite field. Majority of his home runs go the opposite way. 3-1 pitch from Yeomans. Hard cut that he missed on, three and two. Now remember, he's been bothered by a bad shoulder. The runners will be moving in this situation. Abner from second, Alomar from first, with two outs and a full count. Runners are on their way to 3-2 pitch. Hit hard into left field. Reigns is back on the track at the wall. And he makes the catch. The Owens is bailed out by Reigns at the wall. Another opposite field shot off the bat of John Crock, but Reigns just before the top of the wall. Watch him leap, times his leap, and makes the catch. Nice play by Tim Raines. The Expos certainly have some work to do. Down 7-1. to one. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Now let's go to TSN Control for another sports update. You got that right, Paul. 7-1 Padres. Hubie Brooks hits a fly ball to right field. In foul territory. Caught by Abner. One away, and the Expos are down to their last two outs. Jimmy Jones trying for the complete game. Has given up five hits. Jones hasn't thrown a complete game in his six starts this year. The 11th manager of the Padres, Larry Boa, a little happier tonight than he has been in the last few evenings after Padres games. Got batting coach Amos Otis standing right next to him. He's got to have a little more of a smile on his yeah. face. Seven runs on the board. Most nights he's been hiding. <laughs> Pop up to the third baseman, Randy Reddy. Expos are down to their last out. Friday the 13th has been all right to this guy. Jimmy Jones looked very sharp tonight. Andres Galarraga. Fly ball to right. This might do it. Send near Roberto Alomar. Ranging far to his left, over to the line, makes the catch. And the San Diego Padres, losers of 11 of their last 12 coming into the night, win big, 7-1 to one, over the Montreal Expos. The 13,000-plus here tonight, happy to see their Padres win. They can't figure out what the problem was on the road. Not scoring runs tonight. They blew out the Expos by scoring seven runs, and that in a combination of Jimmy Jones' fine five-hit pitching, allowing just a single run to the Montreal Expos to now. Striking out five and walking two along the way. Here's a look at the final out of the night. A little pop-up in the right field, and you can see that Jones, once he realizes that the play is going to be made, a happy young man. Meantime, the Montreal Expos are treading water, struggling against the teams with the poorest record in the National League in Atlanta, now San Diego. The final score tonight, the San Diego Padres 7 and the Montreal Expos 1. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN.